Okay, let's have a look at unit 1.3.5, memory, storage devices and media. Uh, so a quick look at the uh, syllabus learning outcomes. So you should be able to show understanding of the difference between primary, secondary and offline storage and provide examples of each. So we're going to look at primary memory being read-only memory or ROM and random access memory RAM. Secondary storage being um, hard disk drives and solid disk drives, um, semi-interchangeable terms, let's call them. And offline storage being things like uh, DVDs, CDs, Blu-rays, flash memory and removable hard disk drives. We we'll also uh, need to be able to describe the principles of operation to a range of types of storage device and media, including uh, magnetic, optical and solid state. Those are the three main ones we'll look at. Uh, you need to describe how these principles are applied to currently available storage solutions such as uh, SSD, solid state drives, HDDs, hard disk drives, USB flash memory, DVDs, CDs and Blu-ray discs and you need to be able to calculate the storage requirement of a file. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, core language. Uh, I've not included every single term from there because a lot of them have actually been defined already like ROM and RAM and that kind of thing. Um, so um, I'll just deal with what we've got here. Okay, capacity um, is simply uh, the, the amount of data a storage device can uh, store. Okay, usually um, measured um, in bytes uh, and therefore megabytes, uh, gigabytes, terabytes, etc. We'll have a look at those in a sec. Okay, optical storage um, is basically any any storage device that uses light as a method of uh, reading and writing uh, data. Uh, magnetic storage is any storage device that uses magnetism as a method of reading and uh, writing data. We'll have a look at these in a little bit more, more detail as I'll, a little bit later in this video. And solid state storage um, is any uh, store, oh, excuse me, storage device that uses flash memory as a method of reading and writing data. Uh, so this is often um, little microscopic wires, you know, is or isn't a uh, current able to flow through it. Okay, bit, nibble and byte, we have dealt with it before. Uh, that's a binary digit. Nibble is four bits and a byte is eight bits. Okay, so we've now got um, these terms here, so kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, kibibyte, mebibyte, and gigibyte, gibibyte, sorry. Right, they are all dependent upon this, really, the factor by which they are multiplied when we are going up the, um, up the scale. So a kilobyte is a thousand bytes. Okay, so ten to the um, sorry, a thousand bytes. So a thousand to the to the one bytes. Okay, simple as that. Um, a megabyte is a thousand kilobytes, or a thousand times a thousand bytes. So we're going up in factors of. Um, of a thousand gigabytes is a thousand megabytes. Okay, so as you can see from there, it's a, it's a billion bytes. With a kibibyte, a kibibyte is a thousand and twenty-four bytes. 
okay and maybe bytes uh, and you can work this out if you want to um, you can do it easier than I can right now is 1024 times 1024 bytes okay and the Gibby byte is 1024 oops, excuse me 1024 times 1024 times 1024 uh, bytes so the only difference really is the factor by which they're multiplied. If you're dealing with kilo, mega, or giga, you're going up in factors of a thousand. If you're dealing with kibi, mebi, or gibi, you're going up in factors of a thousand and twenty-four. Uh, pretty much for all purposes, we're going to look at going forwards. A thousand is the one that's acceptable. Okay. So the last three are these are the kind of um, the. Um, Characteristics of storage devices: portability, durability, reliability. Portability is um, is it easy to carry? Okay, so if you're saying, okay, look, I want portability in my um, in my storage device, you're going to get a little flash pen drive. Easy. Durability is. Uh, oh, let me scroll so you can see. Durability is. Will it? Withstand um, will it withstand rough treatment? Okay, can it be bounced around and dropped and um, you know got wet that kind of thing and still keep on working? Will it you know will it um, no matter what I do to it? So for example, if you're um, I don't know an archaeologist or something like that, and you're out and about in the field and you're in strange and wonderful and and challenging environments, you want to know that your hard drive is going to keep on working, no matter what you do to it. Reliability is basically, um, will it um, perform well at all times? Um, what that means is, um, it's not going to break down, you know, just under normal operating circumstances, it's not going to break down, it's not going to lose data, it's not going to become corrupt. I know that if I put data on something uh, now, it's still going to be there in six months or a year's time. Um, and then I'm not going to have any issues with it um, just messing me around. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these um, methods of data storage. So we'll look at optical first. So optical is CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, that kind of thing. Okay, so in the diagram here, um, the blue line at the bottom, this represents the disc. You'll notice I've kind of done it quite thick. Um, this is It is a kind of a dual layer thing. There is a, um, a layer of, of plastic, the nature of which can be changed, lying on top of a reflective surface. So the reflective surface is, is here at the bottom, um, and it's got the layer of plastic. So that, oh, Sorry, there's the reflective surface at the bottom. It's got a layer of plastic sat on top of it. And, and th so this is kind of an abstraction. This is obviously a very... Um, just for illustrative purposes of what's happening. And this is done on a very, very tiny scale, pretty much microscopic. Um, so what I've got here in green is the T, the transmitter, which is basically what I'm going to use to shine a laser at the surface of the disc. And the R is the, is the receiver. So what would happen is um, every um, you know, 44 thousandth of a second, or whatever, however many times it's happening, um, the transmitter shines a laser at the disc okay now at this point it's then it's then it's going to pass through the plastic now because on this occasion here where we're looking uh, the plastic has not got a pit in it i.e it's still opaque that the the light just got to bounce in it to take a, a u-turn and just bounces off somewhere it doesn't make it to the r to the receiver it doesn't make it so the receiver, the, 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 the sensor knows that a laser has been shown, but it hasn't received any light, any signal, so it counts that as a zero. If you can see a little bit sort of further left along here, um, what we're actually looking for, for it to be a one, uh, would be these pits. So I've kind of drawn a few pits in there, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So these here are pits. They are pits in the plastic. They've been burnt into the opacity. I suppose slightly more accurate, actually, whilst the matic would be to draw the line above them there. To say, look, this, the the the, um, the layer of plastic is still there, but it's just uh, got a hole burnt in it. So let's put a pit in the um, in the uh, middle of the disc where we're shining it. So let's put a pit there. There we go, and we'll draw our line above it because it's pretty clear. 
So what's going to happen now for it to be a 1 is again the transmitter will send the laser. It hits the pit, excuse my terrible line there, and because there's no op opacity, because the disc is clear, the signal is clear, it bounces straight off the reflective surface and to the, to the sensor. So the sensor knows that a laser has been transmitted, it has received a laser signal and therefore counts that as a 1. This pit means that the light can reflect cleanly without any kind of refraction of any kind and the sensor, the recipient, gets the disc, the, the, the signal and goes, right, that was a 1. Okay. So all you're doing is you're shining a laser at a disc surface uh, and if it's opaque, i.e. if there is no pit, the light um, refracts off somewhere else. However, if there is a pit, i.e. it is being burned to be clear, then the light, the refraction, refraction is true and it hits the sensor. Okay, let's have a look at magnetic storage. A um, little bit simpler. Um, what we have here is um, the floppy disk, three and a half inch floppy disk. You've probably heard that term, maybe. But essentially, it is a um, a material that can contain magnets. So these little green things are magnets. You have the reader going across the surface of the disk, as it is here, the yellow reader, and it's detecting whether or not, or so whether the um, the magnet has got its north pole up or its south pole up. So that one's north up. This this left that first one is north up, south down. This next one is south up, north down. And the reader is detecting because uh, it's got a little magnetic reader in here somewhere. Let's say yeah, a little magnetic reader here. It's detecting whether it's um, a north or a south pole. If the little microscopic magnet on the disc um, has its north pole up, it's going to take it as a 1. If it's got its south pole up, it's a 0. So again, they've just identified that, okay, magnetics have two states. So they've got north pole and a south pole. If we can detect which one is which, we can then store that as data. So all the reader is doing is uh, it's sat there. The disc material is being passed underneath it. Okay, it's, it's a moving... Um, uh, moving bit of storage and it's detecting whether or not the microscopic magnets have a north or a south pole facing upwards towards the reader. North 1, south 0. Okay and the last one we will look at is flash storage. Um, again a pretty straightforward one this one. Um, essentially what you have is, is millions on a flash drive, a solid state drive, you have millions and millions of tiny little microscopic gates and the gates can either be open in this case, this one's an open gate, um, or they can be closed. Um, if they are open, uh, a circuit, a current is not able to flow through it. Okay, there's no connection between the two uh, parts of the gate, and therefore a current is not able to flow through it, and so the storage will be recorded as a zero. Okay, no current equals zero. The one when the gate is closed, therefore a current can flow through the gate. So that would record that as a 1. So with flash storage, it's essentially measuring or detecting whether or not there is a current flowing through um, a gate. If there's a current flowing, it's a 1. Or if a current is able to flow, it's a 1. If a current is not able to flow, it's a 0. One of the things you're often asked to do is to calculate the uh, storage requirements for a given scenario. So we've got um, just an example scenario here. So um, we're looking at images. And we have been told that um, we're dealing with images that have a resolution of um, 1096 times, times 768. Um, the bit depth is actually four bytes, measured in bytes, and that there are 200 images. And what you will often be asked to do is to um, just calculate how much storage is needed for um, uh, for that scenario. So let's say um, we're going to assume that we've been asked to work out the uh, storage requirement in megabytes. Okay, we want it in megabytes. Now you're not allowed to calculate in the exam, so often they just um, ask you to write the expression that goes with that. So we'll quickly do that. So again, it's, it's pretty simple in a lot of ways. It's just calculating the file size of each image. So we need to do the resolution, so 1096 times 768, that's the resolution, I'm going to put that in brackets so you can see that's the resolution, times 4, because each um, image, uh, each pixel, sorry, has 4 bytes um, 
um, to represent it, times 200 pictures. However, remembering that um, that will give us it in bytes and it, it's been asked for in megabytes. So actually, we then need to divide it by a thousand to the power of two. If it was uh, kilobytes, we'd do, do it by a thousand to the power of one. Because it is megabytes, we need to do it to the power of two. So we've got bytes to kilobytes is a thousand, kilobytes to megabytes is another thousand. So it's a thousand to the power of two. Um, you may be asked to calculate it. If you are asked to calculate it, almost certainly the maths will be extremely straightforward. Um, if you find yourself doing really, really complicated maths, you may be barking down, you know, looking up the, the, the wrong process. Um, but this here, will, 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 that, that in green, works out the storage requirements for storing 200 images of a bit depth of 4 bytes and a resolution of 1096 times 768 pixels. You'll get the same kind of, a similar kind of question perhaps with sound. So on this one, um, I've got a sound file that is 30 seconds long. Uh, it has a, a sampling rate, sampling frequency of 44.1 kilohertz. It's a stereo track. The bit depth is 16 bits, and there are four files, and you're being asked to uh, calculate the storage requirement for that. Okay, so let's do it in a slightly, um, so you, again, you may be asked to write the expression. So the first thing we need to do is to work out um, the um, the size. Uh, the, yeah, the in in in. Uh, oh, sorry, we're going to say we want that in. We'll do this one in megabytes as well. Okay. So the first thing we need to work out is the size of each file, then the size of the four files. So it being a um, a, a stereo track, um, we just need to remember that from last time. So we've got a thirty second track. So it's thirty seconds. Uh, there are 44.1 kilohertz uh, um, sampling frequency, which means that every second there are 44,100 samples being taken. Each sample is 16 bits. Okay, and don't forget it's stereo. Okay, so there are two tracks. So that's giving us the um, the size um, in bits or the the, the file size in bits okay for each one what we then need to do is to get it into bytes so we divide it by eight that will get us into bytes uh, but we also need to once we've got it in bytes to get it from bytes to megabytes so again we've got that thousand to the power two okay so that would work it as work it out for um a single file one single file so we just take that and we'd multiply it by four which would give us the answer in um, megabytes. So again, I've just made sure that I have uh, calculated a file size. Let's calculate the, the size of an individual file. Uh, that's what this section here is doing. That's giving it me in bits because the bit depth was given in bits. Then I divide it by eight to get it into bytes. I do it times 10 to the two to get it into megabytes. And because there are four tracks, I multiply it by four. So all I've done is I have I've written the expression. I haven't calculated it. Often they won't ask you to calculate it if the math is all good. I've just um, gone through the process of writing the, the um, expression needed. And usually what would happen there is you'd maybe get a mark for that bit and a mark for that bit and a mark for that bit and a mark for that bit. That may be like a four mark question. 